here at the Rebel Networker, and today I'm privileged to re-welcome back <laughs> John the John, John, Phil. Welcome back, mate. Great to be Welcome back. back. Great to, to be show. back. Thank and you. just to remind you guys out there, John is a uh, multiple author. Uh, one of his books, Intelligent Leadership, was an Amazon number one bestseller, amongst other things. Um, John, you. we just did breakfast. Yes. Uh, gorgeous breakfast. Oh, it's incredible. Out of this world, I mean, just had a beautiful <laughs> avocado thing. Oh, it's just, oh, anyway, I had to actually stop myself. Um, but it, while we were eating, you were giving us this great uh, experience, really, about particularly about one of your areas of success, uh, and there were many, but this particular one I think will be personal to the viewers because he's so well respected, and that was Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. And you coached Steve, as I understand it, uh, towards the end of his life. Now, you said something that became very pertinent to me, and yes. that was the fact that while you were coaching him, he said to you that he probably wouldn't have engaged a coach if he hadn't been in that position of his life. Yes. And what it presents to me was how many powerful people out there are missing out on that experience of introflection and taking that next step in their life because they think they're there. That's true. So That's what true. would be your three tips probably to anyone who's watching this who thinks, you know what, I don't need a coach. Well, uh, you know, we were talking before we, we, we got on this that, that athletes, if you look at a, a world-class athlete, Phil, in any sport, they have not one coach but multiple coaches. Hmm. And it's the same thing in theater. You go to any walk of life, you've got to have people around you who can uh, provide input, perspective, and feedback so that you can truly break through to become the best that you can be. And you're right, I have encountered so many executives in my career who will say to me uh, during the coaching journey that, boy, they wish they had done this much earlier in their life. It is just, it's one of the big things that I hear. And I think ultimately, uh, the most important thing is to recognize that, uh, I think there's, there's three things. One is, we don't have enough people, executives, looking deep inside of them and, mm. and asking the question about what, what is my core purpose? You know, what, why am I on the life? Uh, why, why am I, why am, what's my purpose in, in this life? Steve Jobs was very, very clear with me on that. You know, he said that he's put on the earth to put a dent in the universe. Mm. And to me, that was huge. Mm. Um, that is, that that's what propelled him as an individual, was thinking very, very big. So I think for the people listening in, um, it, it's critical that you examine that question as to what is your core purpose in life Typically, you can't do that alone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You need a mm. coach who can instigate movement in that direction. Mm. There's a lot of questions that I'll ask, and I actually have a tool that will enable okay. executives to do that. I think the second thing is, there's a lot of people out there who are not leveraging their gifts and strengths. So if you're listening in, uh, I think another instigator is, take stock of your gifts and strengths, but don't ever take them for granted. Be proud of your gifts and strengths. Mm. Um, they've served you well. Uh, and since they've served you well, you know what you need to do? Wake up tomorrow and make them even stronger. Mm. And I think the third thing is be very cognizant of your, of your development needs. And, and honestly, those three things can't be done without a mentor slash coach mm. who can ignite self-discovery in those areas. Mm. So you can't become the best that you can be if you don't have your core purpose, if you're not leveraging your gifts and strengths, you're not addressing your development needs. Mm. So there you have it. So this is huge. I mean, do you actually think that with all these benefits, you just, I mean, they're just it's powerful. I mean, whenever I meet a coach, one of my questions to him is, who's your coach? Yes. Um, and I think, do you think there's a, like a, a false impression there that people only have coaches when, they, when they're struggling, when they're weak, uh, uh, when actually it's the people who are strong that have coaches. Yeah, I would say that uh, we're getting away from that remedial aspect of coaching. Uh, it's still present, I, you know, I mean, I do come across it. Um, I don't accept those engagements anymore, Phil, mm -hmm. I really don't. I only want to work with incredibly successful people who want to become incredibly more successful. Those are the people I want to work with, and we're starting to see more and more, more of those people. Hmm. You know, only about 30% of executives worldwide have ever worked with a coach. That means 70%, most people have never worked with a coach. And just think about the organizations that are listening in, right? If, if you're an organization, you're a CEO of an organization, I mean, basically, 
you know, what are you trying to do every day, right? You're trying to execute a mission, you got a strategy, you're trying to execute all these things. What I've discovered is the very tenets of coaching are exactly the things that drive an organization in the right direction. So if you're a smart CEO, guess what? You need to raise your hand and say, it's time for me to be coached and it's time for my senior executives to be coached, my high potentials and so on and so forth. Perfect. Yeah. John, thank you so much for all the advice. Phil, amazing. Really awesome to see you again, Thank mate. you so much. Yeah. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll be putting some little tags of those three points that John just gave us. Fantastic show, guys. Rebel Networker. Okay.